Welcome back to the channel. We're going to continue working on our rolled over Silverado. Last time we cut our roof off. This time we're going to trim everything out, trim out our new roof, and hopefully get it on and weld it up. So let's get started. Before we start drilling any pieces off of here, we're going to scribe some lines where the bottom of this inside piece meets up with the floor because we're going to change this piece complete all the way to the bottom. I usually like to get ahead of myself and start drilling it off and forget to mark it. And those marks will help us line up our new piece. They're not exact, but they'll get us close. So once we got it marked, we'll start grinding out all of our spot welds with a die grinder. Because it's cheaper to buy and operate than the belt sanders that all the YouTube experts want me to use. There's a time and a place for that. It's not here. So we'll grind out all of our spot welds. We're just going through that outer panel, not cutting into the panel below it. And once we have them all ground out, we'll take our makeshift breaker and knock all of our spot welds loose. Now we're going to drill the spot welds out of the back of our cab. The piece that we want to take off is actually underneath, so we can drill all the way through on these. And probably into the back of the cab, leaving some dents for the bodywork now. They'll appreciate that. Grind off our spot welds on the outside here and separate them with our breaker. Still have a handle on the breaker. Guess I'm not using it enough. And we'll wiggle it out of there. Can't really get the breaker in that back piece. We could air chisel it off, but I think we can just break our spot welds loose. And you know what we do with this. In the pile. Now we're gonna break out our reciprocating butter knife and we'll cut through this A-pillar post. We're gonna cut the inside piece. We're not gonna cut through the outside piece. We're gonna take that off in a different place. A lot of people think you just cut a straight line, weld it up in a circle. Uh, no, that's not how you do it. You stagger the pieces to make sure that they're stronger so that you have the same quality that you had before. So now we're gonna cut the outside piece a little bit lower. That way we don't have one solid joint where there could be a weak spot. If we had cut our upper piece, which was a higher cut all the way through the outer piece, it wouldn't have made that much of a difference since we aren't gonna use that anyway, but it will make a difference when we wanna use it for a template. So that's why I tried to save it. So we drilled all our spot welds. There's like three of them in there in between the two cuts. So we're going to hammer those out, wiggle the ones that didn't want to give up, and well, we're not going to toss this in the pile just yet. So here's a better look at our A-pillar with our staggered cuts, the spot welds drilled off. Now all we need to do is throw our backings in there and we're ready to put it together. Now we're going to break out our favorite tool. We're going to trim this cab corner off of here. I'm not going to trim all of it off. We need to use the bottom because it's rust free. If you follow me on Instagram, you know what the parts we're putting on look like. After I trimmed all the rust off the old truck, I didn't have much left. This looks like a good place to stop. We don't have to do this. We could have just rolled all the spot welds out, but, you know, I need an excuse to use the air chiller. So we're just trimming around the outside edges. We're leaving like little one inch pieces. Then we can take those off later. Some we can take off and the rest we're gonna leave on there. Toss that in the pile. Now we'll scribe our line before we forget. And we'll start grinding out all of our spot welds. Throw out the ones in the back of the cab that need to go through multiple panels. And then we can start knocking them loose. Now we're going to take a sawzall and we're going to cut through our outer panel. We're also going to cut through the inner panel, but it's higher than where we're putting it in anyway. We'll just trim the rest of that off later. But our outer panels are going to be overlapped. So the rough assembly that I cut off will be slid over this. And then we can just weld to it. Gives us a nice backing and since we don't care about how thick it is, 
it's not going to matter. Really need some of those fancy saw blades with teeth to make this go a little faster. But then I might cut too much, so maybe it's a good thing. And you know what we do with this. File. Now we're going to make our final cut on our cab corner. I'll put some tape on there to kind of give me a guideline. Let's see you guys do this with your belt sander. I'm just going to work our way through. We'll also use this piece we're cutting off as a backing. Almost perfect size. So we'll knock our spot welds out. And we'll just wiggle this one off until it gives up. Now we can cut our A pillar on our passenger side. Same way we did the driver's side. Not necessarily in the same place. Unless it happens to be a good location to join the two. There's no high strength steel in this truck, so you can pretty much put these in anywhere you want. On the newer trucks with high strength steel, this isn't possible. And we'll drill out our spot welds that are in between our two cuts. We'll try not to drill through our hand, but no promises. Knock our spot welds loose. Wiggle this one off. And now we can take those pieces we just cut off and use them as templates. We'll line up the dimples that we use to measure and mark our cuts on the bottom. Don't mark the wrong end or your windshield post is going to be a little short. Don't ask me how I know. Inside. And we're going to line up our inside piece. There's a couple holes on the inside that help us line it up. No dimples in this one. So we'll scribe our lines in there. And then we'll knock our piece out. We already described the lines on this side, so now we can start our cuts. I use a die grinder instead of a sawzall. You get a little bit more control. I'm also not sure who this guy is with the hearing protection and safety glasses, but at least he's not wearing the gloves. Now we can cut our inside piece. Looks like we're all the way through. And drill out our spot welds. We can drill these all the way through because we're going to weld this outer panel to the lower panel that we didn't drill all the way through on the truck. We'll take our breaker and separate this piece. And toss it in the pile. Now we'll cut the driver's side A pillar just like we cut the passenger side. And if you can't find the spot welds because the urethane is over them, just go over them with a little grinding disc, lightly, and you'll see the dimples where the spot welds are, and just drill there. We'll drill them with our 8 inch bit first, and then go over them with our 516. We'll knock everything loose. Didn't take much to get this piece off of there. And now we're going to Use our template on the back here. We're gonna scribe this outer panel. We're putting this one in a little higher. There's no reason to drill all the lower spot welds off and replace it because our piece wasn't bent at the bottom. And like the passenger side that was, that's why we put it in so low. This side was pretty much only bent at the top, so we're only gonna replace that. It's a little bit less work. That's why we're doing it in two different locations. Cut through our outside piece, and then drill off our spot welds. And we're not going to knock that piece off just yet, because this piece is kind of big and awkward and flimsy. So if we leave those pieces in there, uh, it makes it a little easier to work on. 
So now we're going to grind off the back of our cab panel here. We'll get it loose and we'll lay it down. We do have a cushion underneath the back of it so we don't dent the roof. We'll grind out our welds here. And then we'll start separating that outer panel. Now that we've done all our work on it and it can be flimsy. Sometimes a little planning makes your life a little bit easier. That's why I didn't rip everything out right away as much as I wanted to. Our pile's getting pretty big. And we're gonna slide this back cab panel out of here. Our two B pillars have those pieces that actually sandwich between these two pieces on our cab panel. That's gonna make it fun to put together. So now we're gonna start prepping everything. We have everything trimmed. So we're gonna grind all our spot welds off, anything that was extra. And we're gonna grind the other side that we're welding to just so we have a nice surface with no contaminants. We're gonna grind all of our seams on both sides to get all the paint out of the way. We don't want any of that stuff getting in our weld. We want some nice strong welds, even though the keyboard welders are gonna tell me that I didn't do it right. So now we're gonna put our backing in on our V-pillar here. We just trimmed off a piece of our other one. We drilled some holes in there so we could weld through it, clamped it up, and now we'll weld it up. And you only have to worry about this video burning your retinas out. If you happen to have one of those new computers that transmits the UV light via the internet. If you just have an old fashioned computer that doesn't do that nonsense, you're okay. Weld up all of our holes and our piece is ready to go. Now we're gonna throw our weld through primer on all our bare metal mating surfaces. Basically just the parts that get covered up with another part. We only want the primer to go where our welds are gonna go, not all over everything. Luckily it cleans up really easy because I tend to get it all over everything. I'm not even using my custom masking system. And when we're all done with our truck side, we're gonna go do our parts the exact same way. This part of the video is sponsored by Red Bull. And while I was waiting for that primer to dry, I ordered some breadsticks thought maybe that I'd actually get that delivered. But unfortunately, the pizza girl also didn't bring the breadsticks. But I made her stay to help me with those real fun. And I also repurposed my mobile frame rack as the roof hoist apparatus. Uh, that is what it identifies as now. So we're going to just kind of drive it in and lower it down. And then the real struggle begins getting all those pieces that sandwich in between other pieces to slide together and getting everything lined up. We're going to do all that with pry bars and scrapers, ratchet straps, and prayers. And we're going to take our time, lower it down, until our first cab corner touches, which happened to be the driver's side. I was kind of hoping it'd be the passenger side, but didn't work out that way. So we're going to move it around and we're going to trade jobs. Pizza Girl is now going to be the roof hoist apparatus operator and I'm going to be the alignment guy. We're sliding those B-pillar pieces in between our cab panels. I want to go right in. Not expecting that. Same thing with the passenger side. Now our bottom pieces aren't lined up. We're gonna have to do that now. We need to lift it back up. Kind of fell down a little too far. Not going up and I just figured out why because our strap came off the back here. So we're going to have to put it on so that it doesn't come off. Our front strap, no problem. The opening of the hook is on the other side. But our rear strap, turns out it was a little bit of a problem. So we're gonna put it through the eyelet this time. That way we don't have to worry about it falling off anymore. Just put it on those inner panels. 
and ratchet it up. Now we can lift it again. And even though I spent the time to use the equipment, I'm still going to use my back to lift this thing up. We need to get those outer pieces to slide over the inner piece. But unfortunately it slid past. We're also trying to get the inside panel on the inside of the piece where it's welded to. It actually went together quite easily. I wasn't expecting it to be that easy. We can take our strap off because those panels are sleeved together. We need to kind of pull it over the other piece because they're the same size. So we need to kind of pull them together. It'll spread the outer panel out a little bit over the inner panel. It's the same panel, but because it's overlapped, we need to pull it together. So I'll take the ratchet strap that was holding it up since now we need to pull it down. We aren't going to need it anymore. And we'll ratchet it down. We'll use our little scribed lines on the inside to line it up and that'll get us close. And we can measure it all later. Now we can worry about our pillars up in the front, sliding these sleeves together. So we'll let it down, kind of rocks forward and slides together quite easily. Now we can clamp it up about where we think it's going to go. Close the door. Door closes. We must have done something right. Got it in the neighborhood anyway. Clamp up our driver's side. Take the strap completely off of it. And then we're going to go get our duct tape and bubble gum and attach our roof permanently. Now we're switching jobs again. Pizza girl is not licensed to drive the forklift. Only operate the levers. We'll take it out of the way and we'll pull it inside and continue working on it. We did this all outside because, well, I didn't know if the roof of the shop was tall enough. The driver's door closed, so things might be in the right place, but there's only one way to be sure. Let's measure it. So we're gonna measure all of our dimples we use cross measurements, we use side to side and up and down. Make sure everything is where it's supposed to be. If our door gaps are right, everything should fit. But we're still going to check our measurements just to be sure. It's always harder to move everything after you've welded it up. But our door closes pretty nice. Our gaps on the roof look good. It's always good to pet the truck a little bit, let it know you mean it no harm. Measure our passenger side. I took all these measurements off the original cab before I cut it apart. I did have some measurements from data sheets, but not quite as many. I like as many as possible. So I used a combination of both the ones I made and the ones I had. Now we'll measure across our window, make sure everything is square, because we did have those B pillars loose and they are flimsy. They might not be square. So as long as our measurements are okay, our glass should fit in there. Now we can start tacking everything up. We're gonna weld our seams. We're just gonna weld a little at a time so we don't get it too hot. I said a little at a time, but apparently I'm going all, all in on this one. Usually I just weld little spots and then move around. Move our clamps. Then we'll weld up our pillar on the front. We're just going to tack everything in so it doesn't move. We don't have to worry about our measurements, checking them over and over again. Once we got a few welds in there, as long as we don't roll the truck over before we finish welding it, everything should stay in place. After we got done welding it, I had the grinding gnome grind everything down, and then we primed everything up that we're never going to see again that's hidden inside. That way we don't have to worry about it rusting. 
when we prepped our new cab corner, ground all of our spots down, put our weld through primer on, and the bottom of that thing is clean. We don't find them that clean around here. That's why I rebuilt this truck. Ground all the paint off of our welds on the outside so that we can have a nice surface to weld to. Now we're ready to put our cab corner in. Put our foam on the inside. We've got about five minutes to get this in place. So uh, let's start the timer and see if we can get it done. The foam starts expanding in about five minutes. Got to be quick. Like a bunny. So we slide it underneath the roof. And we just slide it over the outside edges. We scribe some lines on there. And then we have our old seam sealer. So it pretty much should go right back where it belongs. Oh yeah, by the way, if you're playing the roof drinking game at home, you're probably pretty hammered by now because I've said it a million times. We'll clamp up the top. And our inside piece, we can't put a clamp on. So we're gonna run some sheet metal screws in there. Self-tapping, of course. You can't be bothered with drilling holes. But that way, we can close the door, make sure everything fits. If we had a clamp in there, we wouldn't be able to close the door. And this cab corner can pretty much move in and out a little bit and get our gaps right. The backside, we can clamp. There's no door in the way. Close our door, see how our gaps look. Make sure we're right in and out. And now we're ready to do our passenger side. This side we had to cut the bottom because this was all rusted out on our used piece. And we prepped our truck side. Still have to take the old foam out, but there's our seam all welded up, primed. Our backing is in for our cab corner. So now we can set our cab corner up here. We're just going to have to weld that seam at the bottom. We'll slide our cab corner underneath the roof panel. And we'll slide the bottom of it over our backing. The backing is just the same panel. I cut that little piece off and tacked it in there. We'll clamp it up, close our door, see how it fits. Clamp up the back of it. We get our distance just right. And we'll put our self-tapping screws in there. Hopefully where it belongs. And then we'll check and make sure we got it right. Make sure you pet it. Good truck. And our gaps turned out just right. Got lucky on that one. So now we're ready to tack our cab corner up. We're just gonna weld all of our spot welds. We'll weld that seam across the bottom in little sections so we don't get it too hot. And we'll just weld all our spot welds up. Now we're gonna pull this passenger mirror off. I don't know why they have tow mirrors on this little truck. They're actually on the parts truck. Wasn't like you were towing anything with a 1500. It's not anything you need these ridiculous mirrors for. We did cut the wires off of it, so they're just manual mirrors now. And there's the dents that the mirrors made. So I was trying to avoid any more of those to keep the bodywork known happy. Now Scott's GM Truck Emporium had a hood for one of these that had been taken off of a Tahoe many, many years ago. The insurance company wrote a new hood because this hood latch was bent. There was actually nothing wrong with the hood itself. It just pushed the front end over and bent this hood latch. Well, insurance companies aren't gonna let you repair this, but I'm going to. So it's all mangled. There's no straightening it. It's actually got a crack in it. So we're gonna knock it loose. There's some rivets in there. So we ground the rivet out of this side. Of course, we ended up knocking the piece down inside the hood. The only place I didn't want it but we fished it out of there. And that method kind of sucked. So now we're gonna try the drill method. See if it goes a little faster. I'm just gonna drill out the center of this rivet. We got our eighth inch drill bit. Drill is a pilot hole. 
Then we're going to go back over it with our 516th, I believe it was. And this drill bit's a little bit longer, and I really don't want to put any extra dents in the hood. So we're going to take our time. I'm still not convinced I'm not putting any dents in the hood. So we have our angled breaker. We're going to pull up on the hood and push down on that. So if the drill bit did go through, it would hit the breaker, and hopefully that would keep the hood from venting. That's my theory anyway. Didn't matter because I didn't push it all the way through, so we're okay. Body work, no one is still happy. And the end of our rivet fell out of there. And that's what it looks like. Now we can drill out the rest of the rivet, decide that we ground out, since that was a fail. Sometimes your first method isn't always your best. The drilling method was way better. Put our breaker in there so we don't end up with dents in the hood. And this one's, a, well, it's a good thing we had that breaker in there because we would have had a dent in the hood. This one's a little bit rusty around that latch. Pretty common on these, but the rest of the hood was rust proof, so the seams are all really nice. We'll clean up that rust around the latch. But first, we need to get the hood off of our truck because we need to cut our latch off this one. So we unbolted our hood hinges. We also took our ground wire off and our hood light. This truck is old. It has a hood light. So now we're going to use our tried and true drilling out the rivet method. It seems to work much better. We don't care if we drill all the way through and make dents in this hood because, well, there were already plenty in it. We'll drill out our rivets. We'll knock our latch off of here. We're ready to go. Put it on our other hood. We cleaned up all that rust and primed it. So now we're just going to put nuts and bolts in there since I don't have a fancy rivet tool to put the rivets back in. We'll put the bolt from the inside out. And we'll set our latch over it. And we'll screw the nut on there. The same thing on the other side. We have a magnet there in case we need to go fishing. We drop our nut down in there, or the bolt, or the latch. But we didn't do any of that. So now we'll tighten it down. Manufacturer specs. And our hood latch is on, but I want to make sure it's not going anywhere. So now we're going to weld the bolts and nuts together so that they can't loosen up or ever come off of there again. And we'll put our hood back on. We made sure to walk it over the roof just to uh, add a little suspense. Put the bolts back in our hood hinge. There are a couple little door dings. I don't know if they're door dings. I don't know how you get door dings on the hood, but there's a couple little dings. Maybe hail damage on the hood. And it's a lot easier to repair it when it's on the truck. So that's why I threw it back on. And I want to make sure that my latch works. So the bodywork gnome was here. He got all of our dents fixed. He got everything ground down. And he got all of our primer on there. Then the seam sealing gnome, right here, came and seam sealed all of our joints that we had to replace the seam sealer on. And now we're going to wait for that to dry. And then it's off to the painting gnome. Uh, that's going to be quite a big job. Much bigger than putting this cab together because I don't know what color this truck is going to be, but I know it's not going to be red. So we have a lot to take apart. So we'll get into that next time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take. I got no love for the fake news. If you want to play tough and want to hate this, I'll always show up.